Well, welcome to a nondescript hotel room somewhere in Asia. Today, we're going to be talking Macau travel tips because we recently traveled there on a yeah. day trip from Hong Kong. And actually, we've also been there. We went there maybe like three years ago and actually yeah. stayed overnight. So we thought, why not share some of the tips, some of the things we've learned for anyone out there planning a trip there. And because we've done both of those types of trips, we think uh, we think we can offer something for just about mm -hmm. everyone. So you, yeah, you can do it by day from Hong Kong and yeah. you can also stay overnight too. So as usual, we've got our notes in front of us on right. the computer, so you're going to see us staring down. But that's just so we give you accurate information and we're not making stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. So how like how a lot of people describe Macau is they call it the Vegas of China. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's not really fair because Macau actually generates seven times the amount of revenue as the the strip on Vegas. Cha -ching -ching. So if anything, Vegas should be called <laughs> you know it should be the Vegas should be called the Macau of of the United America. States. The yeah. Macau of America. <laughs> so like that is how much uh, gambling is a part of Macau. But Macau is also way more than just gambling. It also has a lot of colonial history and you can really see that when you're walking around in the old town. It's just very Portuguese, like the buildings, the floor tiles, even the cuisine. So even if you're not into gambling, it's really worth visiting. Right, and there's also a lot of really like fascinating street foods as well. Mm -hmm. That are It's called Macanese cuisine. It's a combination of Portuguese and Southern Chinese with a lot of Southeast Asian uh, ingredients. So yeah. quite fascinating <laughs> stuff. So the local currency is the Macau Pataka. I had no idea, so I was calling it Macau dollar, Macanese dollar the whole time I was there, which is pretty embarrassing. It is. But anyway, <laughs> the exchange is one US dollar to eight patakas. Yeah, and it's basically almost identical to the Hong Kong dollar. Mm -hmm. And that leads into our next point, whereas if you're coming from Hong Kong, you can use Hong Kong dollars in yes. Macau. It's widely accepted. Yeah. But here's the catch. If you do take out uh, the Macau patakas, yeah. if you are if you have quite a bit of them, you're gonna want to especially exchange your coins before you go back to Hong Kong, yeah. because those coins are not accepted in Hong Kong. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a bit of a double standard. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, yeah, if you do have Hong Kong extra Hong Kong dollars, do bring them in and spend them in Macau. It is possible to do that. So our next point is transportation. How do you get to Macau? And there are actually lots of different ways. Right. I would say probably the most popular if you're coming from Hong Kong would be the ferry. Right. And you can take the ferry from Hong Kong Island, Kowloon, or from Hong Kong International Airport. Yeah, so you have those different options. Mm -hmm. And so that's arriving from the, that's let's say arriving from Hong Kong. But you can also arrive from mainland China. There are buses from like Guangzhou and other places. Uh, Shenzhen, different types of places. They also have ferries too. Mm -hmm. And then of course there is the airport and something to keep in mind, even if you're going to visit Hong Kong, not just Macau, is that uh, the Macau airport has some really good budget flights. Yes. So you may actually be able to fly into Macau cheaper than Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're thinking of flying into Hong Kong, especially somewhere from Southeast Asia, uh, consider also Macau because you may get a much better deal. I remember the one time we flew in from Chiang Mai, we got a really good uh, yeah. price from Air Asia. Yeah. So yeah, do consider that. And you know what? Speaking of flights, we should also mention you can come to Macau by helicopter. <laughs> yeah, if you want to arrive like a boss, you want to arrive in style. I think it's like about $500 yeah, it's for about one $500, way. $500, but it's only 16 minutes from right. Hong Kong. So if you're in a rush, you want to do gambling, you know, take the helicopter <laughs> and you'll be there in no time. So speaking of the ferry, you're going to save a little bit of money if you go on a weekday as opposed to the weekend. It's just mm -hmm. slightly cheaper. Um, you're looking at around just over 20 US dollars for an economy class. Yeah. And that's perfectly adequate. I mean, uh, it's only an hour ride. So, and there's departures leaving every like... Very frequently, yeah. like 15 to 30 minutes. Right, and you can go any time of day. You can leave really early in the morning, you can come back late at night or vice yeah. versa. So it's really easy. We've always just shown up and bought our ticket, um, like right from the stands, yeah. right when we want to go. And that's probably fine on weekdays, but if there's like a really big event going on in Macau or it's on a weekend, a busy time of year, I recommend booking in advance and you can do that on TurboJet's website. I've Triple also Jet. I've also once booked it online. It was really easy. Okay. They accept credit cards, stuff like that. So of course. 
super easy. So next, let's talk about accommodations in Macau. And we've got to tell you, just like Hong Kong, it is not cheap. I would go as far as saying that it can be more expensive than staying in Hong Kong. Yeah, it is. There, uh, Hong Kong does have budget options. You can stay in dorms. In Macau, that's basically non-existent. Yeah. Uh, I remember even the first time I visited Macau, which is before I met you, they, they didn't really have many dorm options or hostel options. And that is true even, uh, even to today. And I guess when most people are going over there to gamble, um, yeah. They've got the cash. <laughs> They've got money. And there isn't even a lot of very good mid-range options, to be honest. Yeah. So there are some sort of more like dingy hotels, which are not located by the casinos, not located by the main attractions. And you can probably find something for under a hundred US dollars, but don't expect a lot at that price, which is kind of why we recommend doing it by day. If you're visiting Macau more for the culture and the food, then you can definitely make a day trip from Hong Kong. But if you do want to gamble and do some of the more entertainment, the shows at night and stuff, then you probably will just have to cough up the money, stay in a casino uh, or like famous hotel and pay a bit more. And we have notes on that here. So a two to three star is going to be between 88 to 160 US dollars. And if you're looking for four or five stars, 150, all the way up to 600 US bucks. So yeah, bring your money. <laughs> <laughs> so there are Airbnb options. Uh, we noticed some places where you can get a shared room for 40 or $60 a night. So that's actually not bad. Well, not a shared room, like your own private room in someone's house, but right. you won't have the whole apartment. Yeah, yourself, sorry, that's, that's what I meant. And I noticed that those places weren't like right in the core of the city. So again, more on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. And if you're wanting to get your own place, you're looking at 80 to $200 plus. Yeah. So yeah, again, not very cheap, um, but it is available. So next up, let's talk about transportation around Macau. And one thing we really enjoyed is that all of the casinos and hotels offer free shuttles from the terminal because obviously they want to lure guests like come gamble at our place. Yeah. So they offer free transportation, which is great for visitors on a budget, I would say. It really is. So you can literally arrive at one of the ferry terminals and then hop on one of these free shuttle buses and they will mm -hmm. take you to all of the major casinos and also to some major attractions as well. Yeah. Too. So it's actually a really good way to get around the city and it's absolutely free. So you can tell that is our favorite way to get around Macau. <laughs> Hands down. So aside from free transportation, also just walk around Macau on foot. I mean, a lot of places, once you arrive in a certain area, like if you're in Taipa or you're near Sonata Square or St. Paul's Ruins, for example, a lot of the places that you can just reach by foot and it's just, it's a really pleasant way just to walk around in Macau. So it's very pedestrian friendly and we definitely recommend that. That being said, we would not recommend walking from the strip where all the casinos are all the way to Sonata Square because you're not going to oh. make it. Take a bus to get there yeah. and then you can walk around once you're there. That would really be pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another option is you can take also public buses which are fairly cheap and also taxis. So a taxi shouldn't cost more than about five US dollars for short rides and uh, yeah if you're in a hurry that would probably be your best bet because you do sometimes have to wait around for the shuttle buses. Mm -hmm. You have to, they leave at designated times for example and if something's too far to walk then yeah consider Consider taking the taxi or one of the public buses. So for all you budget travelers out there, next up we're going to talk about free attractions you can visit around Macau. And number one, I would say the area around Sonato Square, which yeah. is kind of like the main plaza, the main square. You have lots of Portuguese architecture and tiles. Yeah. Um, you can get some street food while you're there. Yeah, it's, it's nearby a lot of other major attractions mm -hmm. and it's just a very central area and it's a great place to people watch as well. Yeah. And once you're at Sonato Square, you can walk all the way to the ruins of St. Paul, which yeah. is basically the facade of a church. Like the building is no longer there. So all you see is the facade and yeah. the steps leading up to it. But I would say that's that's a pretty cool walk yeah. from those two points. It's it's a major landmark and mm -hmm. you're going to see tons of people taking photos there. Yes. It's, it's quite photogenic. And it's also as you pass from Sonato Square all the way to the ruins that you're going to see probably that's where you can get most of your street food too. Yes. Free sandwich. Samples of food, guys. Yeah, there's food. There's that was another one of our first places. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these stores they lure people in by offering free samples. So you can get yeah. free samples of almond cookies, free samples of like the jerky. pork jerky, pork jerky with glazed honey. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different free samples. 
So hit those up before you actually purchase something. Mm -hmm. So obviously another free attraction are all the hotels and casinos. And I mean, some of them are themed. You have the Venetian, which looks just like Venice. Yeah. And you have the Parisian, which looks just like Paris. Right. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, you can go hotel and casino hopping. Yeah, and some of them are really cool inside. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the nice thing is that all of the shopping area and all of the entertainment area is is free to anyone in the public. Yeah. It's only the casino part where you have to be gambling in order to go into. You can't just wander around in there. So aside from Sonata Square, another really cool place uh, where you can see a lot of Portuguese architecture and visit some museums is Taipa. Mm -hmm. And it's also a great place to get street food. That's where we tried our Macanese egg tarts mm -hmm. and a few other delicious Pork chop buns. Yes. So that's a great place to wander around. So we've already talked about free attractions in Macau. Now we're going to move on to things that you're probably going to want to pay for. So first up we have Macau Tower. Yeah, and I mean you're going to get a great view of Macau from there. All of the casinos, all of the different islands. So yeah, definitely go up it. This is actually a confession time. This is something that we haven't done before, but uh, yeah. If you're into towers and getting really good views, then definitely check it out. And you know what? I'm pretty sure you can go bungee jumping. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, it's something we've never really researched no, because we, we have no interest. But we're you can go bungee we're jumping. both terrified of heights, so that's not something we would do. But uh, <laughs> if you have a little more courage than us, mm -hmm. consider it. So the price to go up Macau Tower is 135 patakas, and it's obviously a little bit cheaper if you're a child or a senior citizen. So this next attraction that you're going to want to pay for is a mouthful, so I'm going to read it to you. It is called City of Dreams, House of Dancing Water Spectacular. Right. And basically, it's a nightly show, kind of like a performance. So if you like entertainment, that's something you can do. This yeah. is located on the strip where all the casinos are. Right. And again, that's something we haven't done, but it's mm -hmm. very, very highly rated. But this one's quite pricey. So in terms of prices, it's going to cost you... 580 Hong Kong dollars, which is about $75 per ticket. And of course, we couldn't talk about Macau without mentioning gambling. So, so many people go there to gamble, and if you're so inclined, you can spend as little or as much as you want. You can drop huge wads, wads of cash in Macau, and if you want to gamble, there is no uh, shortage of places that will take your money. And there's probably no limit to how much you can bet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so next up, we're going to talk about different foods you can try in Macau. And we actually made an entire video yes. dedicated to Macanese street food. So you can check that out if you're interested. If you're a bit of a foodie. <laughs> there um, are just tons of options. Like we yeah. ate like seven or eight different things. So there's just tons of things to try. And we ate really well. So I would say one of my favorites was the egg tarts, the yes. Portuguese egg tarts. Those were so tasty. Oh my gosh. So crispy those, and flaky. Those are so good. Those like rival the egg tarts that you find in Portugal, the original ones. What are they, the pasta de nata? Yeah, 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 they were so good. Those are fantastic and they're also really cheap. So another really popular one to have that we highly recommend is a pork chop bun. It's yeah. basically like just like a pork chop in a bun. And the, the outside of the bun is crispy and then it's really doughy inside. It's yeah, just, it's toasted. Yeah, it's toasted. It's just really good. Trust me. Try that one. Just make sure you don't like bite it to the bone like oh Sam did. Oh my Because, gosh. I mean, the pork chop yes. obviously has I, the chop I didn't there. see the bone <laughs> and <laughs> I, I bit into it really hard and I thought, oh my gosh, did I just... What did I just I did I chip a tooth? So like, I was wondering, am I actually going to be able to enjoy a cow or do I have to go to have make an emergency, emergency dentist, dentist appointment? Okay, so next up, and this is for the more adventurous uh, people, try the durian ice cream. Oh, oh my gosh. It smells bad. I love durian. You hate it. So if, if you already know you hate durian, then obviously don't Stay try away. it. But yeah, if you've never tried it, try the durian ice cream. It's really good. And the next one I want to talk about is basically the sweet pork jerky that you can find. Mm -hmm. These are just thin strips that are cut up with scissors and put yeah. into a bag. They're really good. It's really soft. It's so different from North American jerky or also biltong, which is something I've tried from South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's really soft jerky. It's really sweet. Makes a great snack. And another thing I really enjoyed trying was the almond cookies. Oh yeah. And those for some reason just make me think of Christmas. They're like little small bite-sized cookies and they're very dry. Yeah. So if you're going to buy a whole bunch, you probably want to enjoy them with tea or some kind yeah, of beverage. Yeah, maybe a bubble tea. Good. We, we yeah. enjoyed ours with bubble tea. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and if you go by some shops, you can actually see them making the almond cookies, which yeah. is fascinating. So I would recommend buying them from one of the shops that's making them right in front of you. You know yeah. it's fresh. You know it's good. And another thing you can try in Macau is Portuguese wine. We didn't really oh, get to this. I but highly regret not doing that. Yeah. We just didn't have time. I love wine, so I would have loved to try the Portuguese wine. Apparently, it's really affordable and really good quality too. Next time. Now moving on to things we loved about Macau. Yeah, so these are all of the things we really liked about Macau and what made it an attractive place to visit. So number one would be the free hotels and casinos. You can just wander around and I mean you've got these grand buildings so yeah. it's kind of like if you if you were there just to for shopping and entertainment, you could literally make that the focus of your entire trip. Mm -hmm. There's just so many different casinos and hotels to visit, and every time we go back, there's a new one. There's yeah. like a new building. They build fast in Macau, oh, I have to say. They sure do. Yeah. Anyways, another thing we enjoyed was the street food, which yes. which we've mentioned a few times already. That was. Really oh good. my gosh, the Macanese street food is amazing, and one of the advantages of snacking on street food all day long as opposed to going to sit down restaurants is it yeah. really helps you manage your time you can see and do a lot more when you're just like picking up these little bites having something quick to eat and then moving on to the next thing and it's a lot more affordable than going out for a fancy yes. meal in macau because i have a feeling that would not be affordable no it, would, it could get pricey really quick and yeah all the mackinac street food is really cheap like everything was under five dollars some things were even under one dollar mm -hmm. so really cheap really delicious Highly recommend it. So another thing we really like is all of the Portuguese architecture and ruins that you can find throughout the city. It's just fascinating to see that type of architecture in, you know, a part of the world where you normally wouldn't associate yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah. It, it just gives a, like, some people come obviously to Macau to gamble and to do other things like that, but you can also be a culture vulture and enjoy the Portuguese architecture and other things. So another point to add is that this is such an easy day trip. Like it's yeah. just so convenient to hop in a ferry and you're there. Right. So the ease of travel is another like really it's, alluring thing it, about yeah, Macau. It's, it's very attractive and if you want to do it the way we did it, we woke up really early in Hong yeah. Kong. We went to the ferry terminal, bought our ticket, quickly went through immigration. Do remember to bring your passport. Yes. You are going from one special administrative region to another from Hong Kong to Macau. So don't forget to do that. But yeah, you can go buy your ticket on the spot. We were we were on the boat within like, what, 30 minutes? Yeah. And then within an hour in Macau, immigration yeah. was a breeze there. And so like by, I don't know, by like eight or nine, we were like already rolling. We were, we were sightseeing, exploring Macau. So yeah. yeah. And then you can come back again late at night. Mm -hmm. And that's that makes for a great, really busy day. I find that when you have some time scarcity like that, you just you just maximize your time. Yeah, you, you really run around. You really run. We did. we did, and we saw a lot. And uh, yeah, check out our video to see what we did in just yeah. one day. And one final point about things we loved about Macau would have to be the free transportation yes. provided by the hotels and casinos. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, hotels and casinos. Even though we didn't really spend money in I know. We took like three different shuttles yeah. while we oh, were there. Oh, what was it? Was it with a Wynn Hotel? Going from the Wynn, Wynn hotel, hotel back to the ferry, we were the only people the only on people. that shuttle. And they drove us. It was a private ride. It was yeah. awesome. So yeah, do take advantage of the free transportation. These these casinos and hotels, they have tons of money, so you don't have to feel feel guilty about it. All right, moving on to the things we hated about Macau, basically the things that we disliked about Macau. And the first thing that comes up is the accommodations. The lack of budget and mid-range accommodations. It really outprices a lot of travelers and visitors. But obviously, the city's making a lot of money, so uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon and I don't see there being a lot of budget accommodations both now and in the future. So another thing that we kind of hated about Macau is that it's, let's say by mid-afternoon a lot of the major attractions like Sonata Square, St. Paul's Ruins is just packed with people. Super crowded, oh. oversaturated. Yeah, this, it's a little bit overwhelming. So the way that you can get around that is to visit these earlier in the morning, yeah. um, especially if you're staying in Macau. We didn't have that option because we got to these around the mid-afternoon, but it was a little bit overwhelming. Like, yeah, like there was a point where we weren't actually moving. We were no. just standing there in yeah. a crowd, like kind of getting pushed and shoved. <laughs> 
So that wasn't so pleasant. I guess that's one of the downsides. Right. So to like like we said to to get around that visit during off hours. And the last thing that I didn't really enjoy <laughs> was the ferry ride coming back. It was totally fine on the way there, but on the way back it was super choppy and like the boat was <laughs> bouncing up and yeah. down. And that's when I understood why they have seat belts on, yeah. on the seats on the ferry. It's because like you're getting some serious air and to, it was like yeah, to, oh. to be honest, it doesn't bother me as much. Like I don't get a seasick. And yeah. one one tip we can offer is to try to get a seat on the second level. That's yeah. that that is never as choppy as on the first level. Yeah. So yeah, try to get your seat on the second level, especially if you mind the, the choppy waters mm -hmm. and if you get seasick easily. Yeah, so I would say those are all our travel tips for Macau. I hope you found them useful and we wish you a wonderful trip if you're traveling there soon. Absolutely. Do visit Macau. It's, it's, it's definitely worth at least one visit there at one point in your life. Bye! Bye.